We're down here in the garage right now where I want to show you how we cut out the ceilings. So basically we have the, the septic connection over here, which we got to make uh, the final connection to. We have the water line coming out, which was awesome because the previous builders back in the 90s, they made provisions in case there ever needed to be water or sewer over here. So, but basically I want to show you the run down here. So we opened up the ceiling and that way we can bring the waste line for the toilet and the vanity. We're going to shoot this whole distance over here and make the connections up in the ceiling here. The cool thing about this building is it was made with a truss system. Okay, so the floor joists and the ceilings are truss. And what that allows us to do is you can see how the ductwork can go through there. It can slide right through. The electrical, there's no drilling, there's no holes. And it's actually a stronger system. The caveat is, is that the depth of the flooring has to be a little bit thicker to accommodate that truss system design. But when you have that in there, putting in the mechanicals, putting in the electrical, everything becomes much easier. And in our case right now, remodeling this space, it's a, nice, it's a blessing because we have to actually relocate that duct to the other side. And if there was no truss system, we would have to remove this whole entire trunk line back to the source and then run it down the different bay. But because there is a truss system, we just have to go through the openings, cut a new hole in, move it over. And we're gonna do that with a duct over there as well. Really easy, probably saved us about a thousand dollars. You know, day of labor, material, cutting, headaches, extra drywall, extra painting, the whole shebang really helps us out here. So that's some cool thing. And we'll finish out upstairs with the final message of this project. Hey, hey, welcome back. It's Patrick Robertson here at Momentous Building. And today we got week two to talk about framing these new offices, building this project out on top of this detached garage. We're super excited. We've got some progress to share with you. We got the framing done. We got some hardware installed. We got the electrician started and the rough end is going smooth. So what did we do this week? Well, this week we finished bracing out the walls. We put the pocket door framing in. We built the roof over the bathroom in the hallway. So that way we get a nice flat room in the, ba uh, in the bathroom, have a nice ceiling. It's a nicer design in bathrooms rather than the cathedral ceiling because you're running to some interesting conditions in it. Feels a little awkward, especially the height in that room. So one of the major things is that if you look at last week's video and then you look at this week's video, there might not seem to be that much progress in the framing. It doesn't look like two or three guys were here all week long working on you know framing, the woodworking, securing, blocking, things like that. But there's an interesting condition with uh, wood framing and steel framing, it doesn't matter. And the idea of just throwing up walls and then finishing the actual work. In commercial construction, this is commonly referred to as Hollywood framing because they basically throw up the walls to make it look done like a Hollywood set and they still have to screw it in. They still have to brace it. You know, the, the, they might just put one screw in there to hold up the stud. And the same thing with the wood framing side is that we could throw up two by six walls, two by four walls, but we still have to put blocking in it. As you can see, this 14 foot tall wall over here has three rows of blocking because we wanna make sure this wall is nice and sturdy. Same thing with the bathroom wall, same thing with uh, the pocket door setup. All of these things, they take time to do. They're the little details, but they actually make the difference from a let's we got it done to the quality build and the high performance build that we always chase after so that's what we got going on this week we also started with the electrical disconnects and starting the new frame uh, wiring so this was actually a music studio at one point so there was a master switch bank actually on the wall over there which we can go check out and we have to um, unwire all those lights, try to use those as relays. Some of them were three wire, which might be confusing, but basically there's two power wires where we can use the same wire to operate two different devices or two different circuits. And so we have to do some rewiring in there, utilizing what we can and then pr making provisions for new where we have to, kind of getting the game plan. Monday is exciting. We're actually gonna start the rough in plumbing. So that's, that's nice. We're gonna show you down in the basement what we opened up a little bit later. 
for the actual plumbing, for the electrical to make sure we have our runs in for the bathroom. But for now, let me show you what we got cooking back in here and what we got done this week. All right, let's go. All right, let's go check out this switch bank to show you what we had kind of going on here. So making some cuts down there, but here was this master switch bank, seven on the top, seven on the bottom. It controlled all the track lighting and all these different things. So as you can see, we're doing some rewiring, we're removing the switches where we have to. We have to make relays and use it as a, a junction box so it's accessible. So we don't have to cut out everything in the job and everything in the ceiling and rewire completely. But so we can utilize what we can, save some money, save some time. The owner's okay with a blank plate in this case. So we don't have to rip everything out of the wall. So that's one of the things we did. Over here, we have the, the framing around what is going to be the kitchenette. So we're going to have a row of cabinets right here, some uppers going across the top. And then over here, we're going to have a um, dishwasher, sink, a little mini cabinet. So we're actually going to use a smaller depth cabinet, bring it out a little bit. So that way it's in line with the 24 inch cabinets over here. And then we're going to put the refrigerator over here, kind of end the cap over there. And what that does is making that little cabinet, it gives us definitely some more um, square feet to work into the wall, more range to work with. Uh, this opening over here, which would be an office, kind of just maximizing the space. In this case, the owner was okay with having that short depth cabinet. He actually wanted it. And another thing we did this week is the pocket door setup. So this is a really beautiful setup. Let me show you how we do our pocket doors. So we're going to get a little in depth here. So here's the framing of the pocket door, which will go in. And we used two by sixes in this case to actually frame the walling. We used a metal angle track to brace it all together. And what's going to happen here is we're going to have the pocket door in the guide going back. The track's going to be up there, hold it all. And then we're going to actually have the, the molding and everything come down. So it's going to completely hide the hardware on both sides. So it's going to be really beautiful. And these are actually going to be 90 inch tall doors. So if you do the math really quickly, 90 inches is quite tall. That's about seven and a half feet. So really getting up there and it's gonna come out amazing. What's really interesting is that with that, we can really open this space up and instead of bringing the ceiling down, if you step back and look at this whole wall, these are going to be basically giant doors because the doors are pretty much going to be the height of that opening. They're going to be about four inches smaller. So it's going to take up this whole front. And when you open it up, it's really going to open up the space, not make it feel so claustrophobic like a small door would. It's going to fit the ceiling height, which is always really important and forgot about a lot of times, which is interesting not to go on a ramble. When you look at like uh, Greek architecture in the iconic um, Ionic building, there's a lot of about ceiling height to, to room size and these different things in the right proportions. And that's missing a lot in today's builds where the bigger the room is, the taller the ceiling should be. So in this case, that also applies to door heights and door openings. Here, however, we're gonna go with standard uh, six, eight doors. And then these are gonna be 40, 34 openings. Here's another 34 opening right here. We're gonna keep this at 32 to maximize the amount of space we have in the bathroom. We're gonna put the vanity here. We're gonna put the toilet here. And as you can see, we really framed out these walls to be uh, rigid and sturdy. We put the ceiling in up here, and that way we can put some nice recess, light, recess lights in and have a nice flat ceiling to illuminate the space nice. We didn't wanna go with the cathedral ceiling because it changes the proportions, it changes the feel of the room. So in this case, the flat ceiling was definitely worth it. We step into the other office over here, one of them. We're gonna have two closets over here, uh, most likely bifold doors just to maximize space and keep everything nice and clean because one of these, part of this build is we wanna maximize every single square inch we can get. We wanna keep this in open space because we do have these nice big ceilings. So that way, coming back to proportions, we wanna keep the room nice and wide and not get cra crowded and crammed up. Some little framing details, which is cool. So we put in, we definitely 
one overboard you could say and over engineer this but these walls aren't going anywhere as you can see we got a double two by ten up top we have a double top plate there and then we have a two by double two by six header up there that's actually a two by eight then we got two by six over here and then we actually have a few jack studs for each individual header really crazy design i know i'm sure other framers and carpenters watching this are going to be like whoa you guys went overboard you didn't have to do all that you're wasting money that's precious money but yeah maybe so but when this doesn't move over 20 years 30 years and it's still standing did we really waste money or did we do it the right way because a lot of times what we see is projects fail after a couple years few years all these drones start to pop walls fall out we build for 100 years we're looking for 100 years plus out of our builds and it might be silly to say that it might not be egotistical but we plan for the long run as contractors in momentous building I don't want to get a call back in five or ten years. Next time I get a call, it's for a different project, not the same one we already completed. Unless they want to remodel it. What's up to them? But it's not because of deficient work. Here's the other room. As you can see, we still want with that uh, 2 by 10 top section. Eventually, we're going to cut in an axis panel up there, 30 inch by 30 inch. That way, we can use that by, for storage up there. Go from there. So that's kind of a kind of build what we got going on. We'll show you downstairs just right now and uh, how we open up the ceilings, keeping this job site nice and clean. And that's the one thing I wanna talk about. This job site, this is how we keep our job sites. Broom swept, clean, no debris. I'm here on a Sunday. This wasn't planned, nothing. This is how we close out the project on Friday to make sure that this place is safe, clean, and spotless. That's how all your jobs should be, clean and spotless. So if you're a homeowner wondering why, you're, why the hell your job is so dirty, get on your contractor. They should be cleaning it up every single day. No nails on the ground, there's nothing on this floor. I could walk on this floor barefoot and be safe. That's, that's always the goal. That is always the goal. With that being said, let's go check out downstairs and finish this one up. So that's what we got going on. We're gonna close this week out right now, week two, get rolling into week three. What we should be expecting next week is the rough and electrical finished, rough and plumbing finished. And then that way, the following week, two weeks from now, it's gonna be inspection week. We're gonna have the electrical inspection, plumbing inspection, the rough and framing insulation inspection. That way, that's our two week look ahead going from there. And then after those inspections get cleared up, which we're gonna execute, not have a problem, Third, three weeks from now, we're gonna get into the drywall, insulation, taping, mud, then get into those finished fixtures, get setting the kitchen, getting this thing going. So we still have about five weeks left of this job, maybe six. Uh, things are gonna to come together. We're gonna to make a big push after this inspection and really ramp things up and get it done. But we got one more exciting week. The next two weeks are kind of bland, as you're gonna see. The, the rough ends aren't too exciting. Doesn't look like too much happening, but it's the work that needs to get done. It's the boring part of the period. Right now, we just completed all the exciting part until we start throwing up drywall again. So please join us next week. We're gonna go into some specifics on the rough and plumbing and the rough and electrical that is going in. And that way, when you see your next project and your next build, you know exactly what to look for and what you're looking at. Until then, thank you so much. This is Patrick Roberts in Momentous Building. We would love a like, share, and subscribe. So that way we can grow this message, get out to more homeowners. Hope you guys enjoyed the story. Check you out on the next one. Thank you.